Although the Sixers ended up losing, one of the bright spots was Kyle Lowry. His debut in Philadelphia perfectly showcases what he brings to the table. First off, we saw his toughness right away. I mean, he takes a people's elbow to the face. That looked brutal. He shook it off like it was nothing. Somehow, someway, he passed concussion protocol. Hopefully, they actually tested him because, my goodness, it looked like he had a concussion. Whew cleaned up his blood, and returned to action like it was nothing, like nothing happened in his first game. My guy's 37 years old. Keep in mind, all the mileage on his body from years of playing, I would not be surprised if he had to sit down to pee every stop. And at this point in his career, he could have just been like, nah, I'm good. We're going to lose anyway. I'm going to take the rest because I just got blasted in the face. But nope, he's a warrior. And not only did he come back, He was impactful. He was the only player with a positive plus minus. And we all know that's a fluky stat, but my rule is if you see someone come out of the game and you go, no, or you ask yourself, we need so-and-so in the game when he's out of the game, then plus minus can be used. I was asking that in the second half. Only excuse for Nurse on taking him out in the fourth quarter to put Tobias and Batum back in the game is that he's not in tip-top game shape quite yet because he's been off for a while. However, he ended up with 11 points, 5 assists, 4 rebounds. You want to hear something funny? He's 6 foot. Meanwhile, 6'7 Tobias ends up with 4 rebounds. The same amount. The thing about Kyle is I don't have to question if he's given it his all. He always will. Now at this point, It won't always be an impactful, consistent, you know, type of effort. But with some guys on the roster, aka Tobias, I got to question their will to win. And with Kyle, I don't got to worry about that. Let's get into the film to showcase what he can bring when he's playing well. First bucket as a sixer shows defenders respect his shot. They're focused on Maxi, pass out. Brunson knows the shot clock is low. He's just worried about running him off the three-point line. We see his smarts right away. He knows there isn't much time, so he doesn't pump fake or anything like that. He just attacks right away, straight to business, and then the craftiness to avoid the shot blocker with a reverse finish. Little things like this he brings that are lacking. Probably the best passer on the team, to be honest with you. Very quick bounce pass to find the open Oubre, but the placement is the important thing. It is near perfect consistently that is the case with Kyle the placement of his passes and here it doesn't give any chance for Burks to steal the pass the only guy catching that pass is Ubre, and because of that he catches with an edge on the defender and that's all Ubre needs to score he can run around off ball into actions with speed he's just too quick for Bojan to keep up and then he reads Jericho Sims staying locked onto Bamba. So he kisses it off the glass with his weak hand. You can rely on him to make correct reads as a point guard when you set up a play. Again, consistently placing the ball where only his teammates can get it. Great play from Nurse as well. The Knicks were giving him tons of respect from the three-point line all game long. In transition, Brunson does not mess around with his closeout. He's forcing the drive right away, but then the IQ and quick instincts kick in for Kyle. He sees Dante cutting off the driving lane and some would say falling asleep off a shooter like Buddy. So Kyle quickly reacts in .5 seconds, easy three as a result. Little things, little things, fellas. Again, the ball gets swung to him. He has space to fire. He pump fakes and Josh Hart bites hard. He's above the three-point line now, so Kyle gets into the paint, draws Brunson, hits the slip, easy bucket for Martin. That's some playmaking right there. Why does he get the respect of hard closeouts consistently? Because he can consistently knock down open three-pointers at a high volume. He also brings tough shot making to the table from time to time. He's not going to hit these shots super consistently, But in big moments, he can pull something out of them booty cheeks. A floater over two defenders while moving. Come on now. That is just an insane shot right there. 
And then we got a miscommunication from the Knicks here. They got two on ball, pass to Kyle. Now Burks is rotating. Kyle hits him with a pump fake, a lost art in today's NBA. He bites badly. Josh Hart is the weak side rim protector. He acts like he's challenging him just to throw it out to Buddy Heald. And again, I want to emphasize the placement of his pass as perfectly delivered to his shooting pocket so Buddy doesn't have to waste any time. Just simply catch and shoot. He was arguably the Sixers' second best player yesterday. And to me, moving forward, if I'm the coach of the team, it's about maximizing Tyrese Maxey and Buddy Heald. Having a playmaker and leader on the court with toughness and the smarts he brings to the table will get the most out of them, especially on the offensive end of the floor. Kyle Lowry will consistently get them the most shots possible on the team, and it will also keep Maxi fresh the whole entire game, where he can also give more effort defensively. And without Embiid, they need him starting. It's that plain and simple. There's too much responsibility on Maxi in that starting unit. Let me know your thoughts below in the comment section. If you enjoyed at any point, leave a like and subscribe. Have yourself a great day and peace out.